This is episode four of creating a product visualization portfolio from scratch. Today, we're going to make some old spice. If you want to learn more about the techniques that you're going to see me use in this video, I explained everything that I know about Blender inside my Blender course. You can check that out with the link in the description. Now let's get to work. Delete the default cube and with shift A, we're going to add a circle, which is going to have 16 vertices. Fill that circle with F, extrude the circle up like this. We're not using a reference image, but I got one of these right next to me. So I'm going to eyeball it. It's supposed to be approximately this tall. And now we're going to bevel this part with control B. We're going to press C to enable clipping because otherwise it's going to go straight through and it's going to look like this, which is not something that we want. Once we bevel this to turn this part into half a ball, we're going to take this part down here to bottom inset it with I extrude it up and scale it down a little bevel this edge right here with two segments in a shape value of one now with control 2 you're going to add a subdivision surface modifier but you have to add another loop cut here because otherwise the curve here is going to be way too large go to object shade smooth and now place the 3d cursor onto this face segment over here with shift s and with shift a add another circle extrude this circle up a little bit like this now fill with f inset with i and extrude it up to around here somewhere select this face at the top and inset it with i you want to make it so that these vertices at the top and the bottom are approximately aligned with one of the vertices on the side over here. We can check that by pushing it to the side on the X axis and making sure that these vertices overlap. As you can see, we got to make this a tiny bit larger and now it looks like they overlap. So we're going to be okay. Now select those vertices and join them with J that's going to give you some more edges like this. You can slide this out. Same thing over here. Shit. We might as well slide these edges all the way out. Now take this segment over here and extrude it up a little bit further. Get rid of this face, select the face loop and go over here to face grid fill. In this case, span four offset one seems to work pretty well. So we're going to use that lower this part down a little bit, slide these vertices down to the bottom, take this outer edge loop, deselect the vertices at the beginning and the end and slide that up. We're going to select this edge loop at the top and deselect these vertices and slide this out a little bit. Now give me two levels of subdivision surface, go to object shade smooth, select this edge loop around the top control B to bevel it. You might want to straighten out these edges a little bit. So we're going to place the cursor here, select this edge segment, set the pivot point to 3d cursor, then scale this down to zero on the y axis, do the same thing with this next segment here and do the same thing on the other side. Correct to normals with control N. It might be shift N for you. Then add a loop cut over here and down here. Extrude this part inwards a little bit, then extrude it up. Now bevel this edge loop. We're going to make this whole thing a little bit smaller and lift it up a bit. Now give me two loop cuts over here, then apply the subdivision surface modifier with two levels. Select a surface over here in the front. Inset with I, loop tools, circle. We're going to uncheck flatten and check fit inside. That's fucked up. So we're going to do it one more time. Now it looks a little bit better. We might have to scale this down a bit further. Select these faces over here in the middle and extrude right click, scale them all the way down, W loop tool circle, extrude this inwards. This is the hole where the liquid comes out of. Also select this circle here and inset that with I. Now you can extrude this backwards, lead the faces at the bottom, select all the sharp edges. Control B to bevel this. You want to have two segments here in a shape value of one. Now place a 3D cursor onto this circle and with shift A, you're going to add a hexagonal circle or a circle with six vertices. W subdivide, set the number of cuts to two. Now select all the edges in the middle of each edge of the hexagon, scale them up just a little bit, extrude this whole thing up, give me a loop cut like this. I'm going to delete four faces over here, slide this out by two units with double G and do the same thing over here. Select these two edges and go to W loop tools G stretch. Now extrude right click alt S to deflate this check even offset. You're going to delete all these faces on the inside. And over here we got 34 edges. So with shift A, we're going to add a circle which has 34 vertices. Well, the circle is supposed to have 36 edges because we have two extra edges here, which we did not include. So add a circle with 36 vertices, scale that down, fill with F, select a circle, select this loop around the circle, then deselect these edges down here. Deselect two edges from the front, go to W loop tools bridge. Now scale this circle up and get rid of this edge loop here on the inside. You're going to want to push this apart, delete the circle in the middle. Now add a circle down here at the bottom with 36 vertices and do the same thing one more time. W bridge edge loops. You can delete this too. Now you can connect these two circles. First, we got to fill these faces down here. Then you got to place a 3d cursor onto this little platform, then select the rest of the circle down here, extrude that and scale it to zero on the Z axis with this part over here. You got to connect these faces. Let's try face grid fill over here. As you can see, it works pretty well. We also got to slide these edges outwards a little bit to make a different shape here. Now give me a subdivision surface modifier, then select all the sharp edges. Control B to bevel all the sharp edges. I'm going to use two segments, shape value one set to minor outer shape to arc. Now I can connect this with J to keep the topology clean. I'm going to lower this down here. Object shade smooth. This piece is supposed to block the hole. You can spin this shit and then it covers the hole so you can't spray out the liquid. I don't know why you need this. I'm looking at mine right here and when you 
you spin this, you can't spray the fucking liquid out. But when you open it up, now all of a sudden it works. I guess the purpose of this, so when you want to put it in your suitcase, you don't want that shit spraying all over your suitcase. Who gives a fuck? We're just trying to 3D model it. So let's get back to work. Now we're going to start adding some materials and textures. So check this out. Switch over to the shading workspace, add a new material to the bottle. Let's just set the color to red for now, but we're going to replace this with an image texture later. Crank up metallic, reduce the roughness a little bit. Select this ring around here. You're going to name this dark red plastic. Set the base color to dark red, kind of like this. Reduce the roughness a little bit. Now select this part up here, add a new material. You can name that red. Set the color here to red as well. Reduce the roughness. You can reduce the brightness a little bit as well. Then we got to select this piece over here and we got to add a new material here, which is just going to be white. So we don't even have to create a material. We can just leave the default. And now let's find a label for the can. I went to Google and I typed an old spice label and I got this image right here, which I'm going to copy. In PaintNet, I'm going to paste this image and I'm going to try and cut out this hexagon here in the middle. So I'm going to use my magic wand tool to select everything inside here, then control I and delete everything else. Now you just got the label. So now we can select this and press control C to copy. And then we're going to go to Canva and create a new design, paste that shit into Canva. Give me a red background. It doesn't have to be exact because I'm not actually working for Old Spice. I'm just trying to make it look like Old Spice. so You guys can enjoy the video. I got some jagged edges around this logo right here. So I'm going to duplicate it once and place it exactly over the original edit image click on blur down here, click on whole image and add a little bit of blur that didn't work. So I'm going to go to blender shift a image images as planes. I'm going to load this thing into my scene like this. And then with shift a I'm going to add a circle with six vertices. I'm going to scale that down like this. Now we just got to select everything with a and bevel all the vertices with control B and V. I filled and inset this face. Now I'm going to delete the face in the middle. Now I just have this ring over here, which I'm going to make slightly gray, then I'm going to place my camera to top view, change the projection to orthographic for this camera zoom in a little bit. We're going to render this with a one by one aspect ratio. We also got to render this with a transparent background down here in film. Now I've got to render render image image save as we're going to save this to our desktop. Make sure to set the file format to PNG and color to RGBA save as image. Now we can load this into Canva and we can place this ring on top of the logo. And now this is going to give us some extra edges. All we got to do now is make sure that the color matches. So we're going to go to edit image, adjust, increase the brightness. And just like that, we fix the jagged edges. I know this is probably the stupidest way to do it, but that's how I did it. You can do it whatever way you want. You might have a better way to do it, whatever. Give me a text box Add a text box. We're going to type in 48 H fresh place that somewhere up here. And we're going to change the font to Ariel. Make sure that the color of this text is the same as the color of this old spice frame. We're going to place that up here. And then we also have to add two lines. Lines are kind of difficult to work with in Canva. So instead, we're going to add a rectangle and make it really thin. So give me something like this. And then I'm going to duplicate it and place it up here on top. We need to add another rectangle. And this one's going to have a slightly darker color than the frame. Scale this one up like this to make it long, rotate it by 45 degrees. You're going to right click on this item, go to layer and send backwards. And now we have to add in a line because that's the only way we can get this interrupted thing right here. We're going to place that over here, set the other end to this part right here, duplicate this and place it on the other side of this band. Now there's something else going on down here where there's somebody flexing and it says 0% aluminum salt. There's no way that I'm going to be able to find that icon on Google. So I'm going to go over here to flat icon and I typed in flex. Let me get this thing right here. I want the white one copy PNG turns out it's not white, but I can make it white scale this down a little bit, place it down here somewhere, duplicate it, flip it. Give me a text box where I'm going to write whatever I got to write. Let's go to file, download, download again. And now we're going to go back to blender and put this on the bottle, select the bottle, apply the subdivision surface modifier, go to shading, add a new image texture node, open up the image that you just downloaded, plug that into base color. Now select a surface over here in the front and you're going to press U unwrap, adjust this in your UV editor to make sure that it looks right. Now the cans more less ready. Let's put together a scene to render this. We're going to keep it simple. So with shift a I'm going to add a cube and make it really large like this. I want the can to sit on top of this cube, but I want it to sit close to the edge like this with control alt zero. I'm going to place my camera over here. Now with shift a give me a plane and flip that plane sideways and place it on the side right here. Go to rendered view. I want to check the lighting, select the cube, bevel it with control B. We're going to need some bevels on the edge of the cube to make it look nicer. So we're going to bevel this first once with control B shape value one, two segments, then select all the sharp edges 
bevel those again with control B, but this time use a couple of segments and use a shape value of 0.5. Object shade smooth, set the color of the cube to red. Now with shift A, I'm going to add an area light. I'll place that area light somewhere over here. I want the shadow to be behind the bottle like this. Increase the power on the area light. The smaller your area light, the sharper the shadow here is going to be. So if you scale this area light up, you're going to see the shadow get softer. Whereas if it's really small, the shadow is pretty sharp. I want that shadow to be kind of sharp like this. I'm also going to select the background and also apply the same red material to the background. I want to have a shadow on this wall in the back. So I'm going to extrude this edge right here and bring it out on the Y axis. I'll lower it down a little bit to change the angle. I'm going to duplicate this light once, but I don't want this to fuck with my shadow. So I'm going to give it a low power value. I just want this to create a little bit of reflection in the can. I think it would be pretty cute if we had another object standing around summer. So I'm going to go to file append. I'm going to find that strawberry protein tub project that I made in a video the other day on my YouTube channel. When you open that up, you can see object right here. I'm going to type in strawberry and load this object right here. There's a strawberry. So I'm going to place this somewhere here. I don't know if this really makes sense, but old spice is advertising masculinity. So if you put a strawberry in there, it's kind of on some bit shit. So I don't know if that really makes sense, but whatever, we're going to put a strawberry in there anyway. If you follow this video so far and you want to keep working on this thing, I recommend that you make another old spice product in the same color. For example, one of those things that you rub on your fucking armpit and then place that next to this one then you're gonna have more shit going on in your scene and it's gonna look cooler i don't want to do that anymore i want to go do something else so i'm gonna go to render render image and that'll be the end of this tutorial like the damn video subscribe to the channel make sure to check out the blender course it also includes my ebook let me know what you want to see next i'll see you in the next one